Continuing with application security threats, um, we get into artificial intelligence. Now, uh, we could talk about artificial intelligence all day. I could talk about artificial intelligence all day. I've recently done an awful lot of uh, work putting together a presentation on artificial intelligence because of the recent uh, interest in um, the large language models uh, like chat GPT um, which have been doing you know, some fairly impressive work but um, really are only one example of one type of artificial intelligence and are uh, well I'm probably being overrated uh, you know this is impressive stuff you know cute tricks and that sort of thing are they going to take over the world no um, and and the thing is it's not um, it's not the only type of artificial intelligence I mean artificial intelligence is not a thing it's a bunch of things uh, there are different tools there are different approaches um, and uh, Turing's famous test um, is is not so much a statement about uh, you know when will we make a an intelligent computer as be careful how you define intelligence um, uh, you, you have to have a realistic view of what it is that you want and so we've got um, we've got a whole bunch of things um, we've got expert systems expert systems have been around for quite a while uh, expert systems were uh, well developed uh, really 40 years ago um, they uh, could do specific tasks now specific tasks that's the point expert systems it's an expert in a particular area it doesn't work in other areas um, and it uh, interestingly uh, uh, in terms of the programming involved here, expert systems do not use loops. We have loops in all other programming languages. Uh, expert systems are a sort of a drop-through situation because that is the way that human experts actually work in terms of how they come to a decision. Uh, experts in a field sort of, you know, drop through a list of questions and uh, with, you know, by and large, binary yes or no answers. Um, interesting, interesting process, um, but, you know, uh, it's in a specific field. It's, it's for a specific purpose. It's, it's you know, going to work for that and not for other things. Uh, genetic programming, uh, something that was, uh, has, again, come to the fore in the uh, discussions of chat GPT taking over the world and the singularity and stuff like that, particularly in terms of the fact that they will be able to rewrite themselves, rewrite their own code. Um, genetic programming is uh, not exactly that sort of thing. Genetic programming, you uh, get a bunch of programs which are basically um, the same program with some minor tweaks in, in terms of parameters and uh, set them uh, to a task and see which performs best and and you know once you've got the best then you uh, tweak some other parameters and and you know so uh, it's it's sort of a genetic sort of an evolutionary process but y you have to be very careful I mean this is just not throwing random code around and and seeing what uh, uh, survives um, you know computing uh, computer programming is is not to that level. Uh, I, I do recall a friend, an intelligent person, who was quite surprised when I talked about uh, people who wrote uh, computer viruses because he thought that they just evolved. I mean, uh, both Fred Cohen and I have uh, done calculations on how long it would take for computer viruses to spontaneously arise from, uh, you know, mistaken programs, errors in programming, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and, and we came up with fairly divergent answers, but it, both of them were measured in uh, 
sort of lifetime of the known universe types of time scales. So, uh, the uh, uh, neural nets, um, a, a very interesting thing, and it's it's got a relation to the uh, the large language models and and machine learning. Um, uh, in in terms of uh, looking at the human brain, the neurons, and and how we learn, and the fact that when we find a uh, a relationship, um, uh, that you know pathway that relates to that relationship is strengthened, and uh, so you know that's that's how we build um, some of these large language models. They're basically statistical models. Um, and interestingly, they have no understanding of what they're doing. That's why they can make such egregious mistakes. They are uh, simply looking at the probability of the next word in this particular series or sequence. Um, it's, it's just statistics. That's all it is. Uh, so, um, you know, an awful lot of machine learning is, is going that way. Um, anyway, a lot of different areas in artificial intelligence, it's not a single thing, and you need to uh, know which type of artificial intelligence that you're talking about. Um, a few other uh, areas here. Um, input controls. Um, do we have the appropriate controls to make sure, you know, like I said, garbage in, garbage out, you know, uh, are we maintaining integrity somehow with our input controls? Or are we not? Are we in danger of accepting uh, erroneous input and therefore, of course, getting erroneous output? Um, and output controls. Um, not only in terms of, you know, is there some sanity checking on this result? You know, does this result make any sense at all? Um, is it within proper bounds? But uh, is this, uh, you know, in terms of access control, um, you know, is this a result that we should be telling this particular user? So, uh, all kinds of areas uh, there in, in regard to um, application security threats. Um, now, I'm going to go on here uh, in, in the next few uh, sections in um, what you might call application insecurity. We're going to talk about m malware and... and uh, uh, those uh, sorts of issues, um, uh, which may be considered uh, applications to threat, security threats, and probably are, but you know specifically in terms of bad code.